Today we're going to talk about one of the most controversial topics in astronomy, Pluto's planetary status. Is Pluto a planet or not? And what does it have to do with the discovery of subsurface oceans in the solar system? Let's find out. Pluto was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh, who was looking for a ninth planet beyond Neptune. For decades, Pluto was considered a member of the planetary club, along with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But Pluto was always different from the other planet. It was much smaller, colder, and farther away from the Sun. It also had a very eccentric and tilted orbit, sometimes crossing inside Neptune's path. In the 1990s, astronomers began to find other objects similar to Pluto in the region beyond Neptune, known as the Kuiper Belt. These objects were called Kuiper Belt Objects, or KBOs. Some of them were even larger than Pluto, such as Eris, which was discovered in 2005. This raised the question, if Pluto was a planet, then what about these other KBOs? Should they also be considered planets? In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IEU, the organization that decides the official names and classifications of celestial bodies, decided to settle this debate once and for all. They came up with a new definition of a planet, which had three criteria. A planet must orbit the sun. A planet must have enough mass to be round due to its own gravity. A planet must have cleared its neighborhood of other objects. Pluto met the first two criteria, but not the third one. It shared its orbit with many other KBOs and had not cleared them away. Therefore, Pluto was demoted from a planet to a dwarf planet a new category of objects that met the first two criteria but not the third one. This decision was very controversial and sparked a lot of debate among astronomers and the public. Some people accepted it, while others rejected it and continued to call Pluto a planet. But the story of Pluto did not end there. In 2015, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft made history by flying past Pluto and its five moons, Charon, Nix, Hydra, Styx and Kerberos. It took stunning pictures and collected valuable data that revealed a lot of surprises about Pluto and its system. For example, Pluto has a complex and diverse surface, with mountains made of ice, plains of frozen nitrogen, valleys and craters. Some regions are young and smooth, while others are old and rugged. Pluto has a thin atmosphere made mostly of nitrogen, with traces of methane and carbon monoxide. The atmosphere varies with Pluto's seasons and distance from the Sun. Pluto has a system of moons that are very different from each other. Charon is the largest one, almost half the size of Pluto. It has a reddish color due to organic molecules on its surface. Nix and Hydra are small and irregularly shaped. Styx and Kerberos are even smaller and darker. Pluto and Charon are tidally locked to each other, meaning they always face the same side to each other. They also orbit around a common center of mass that lies outside both bodies. This makes them a binary system rather than a planet-moon system. Pluto may have a subsurface ocean of liquid water under its icy crust. This ocean could be kept warm by tidal heating from Charon and radioactive active decay in Pluto's core. These discoveries showed that Pluto is not just a cold and barren rock at the edge of the solar system. It is a geologically active and dynamic world that has many features in common with planets. Some astronomers argue that this should be enough to restore Pluto's planetary status. They claim that the IU's definition of a planet is too narrow and based on arbitrary criteria that do not reflect the diversity and complexity of solar system bodies. They propose that a planet should be defined by its intrinsic properties rather than by its location or interactions with other objects. On the other hand, some astronomers defend the IU's decision and say that Pluto is still different from planets in important ways. They point out that Pluto is still much smaller than any planet, and that its orbit is still very eccentric and inclined compared to planets. They also note that there are many other KBOs that are similar to or even larger than Pluto, such as Eris, Make Make, or Haumea. If Pluto is a planet, then they should also be planets, which would make the solar system too crowded and confusing. So who is right? Is Pluto a planet or not? Well, there is no definitive answer to this question. It depends on how you define a planet and what criteria you use to classify objects in the solar system. There is no universal or objective way to do this. It is a matter of convention and consensus among astronomers and the public. As our knowledge and exploration of the solar system evolves, so does our understanding and perception of its members. Pluto is just one example of this, but not the only one. Pluto is also part of a larger story, the story of oceans in the solar system and beyond. The discovery of a possible subsurface ocean on Pluto adds to the growing evidence that water is not only abundant but also diverse in the solar system. There are many other worlds that may have oceans under their surfaces, such as Jupiter's moons Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, Saturn's moons Enceladus and Titan, Neptune's moon Triton, and even some asteroids and comets. These oceans may be made of water or other liquids, such as ammonia or methane. They may be warm or cold, salty or fresh, 
shallow or deep, isolated or connected. Why are these oceans important? Because they may be the key to finding life beyond Earth. Water is essential for life as we know it, and oceans provide a stable and protected environment for life to emerge and evolve. Oceans may also contain organic molecules, minerals and energy sources that could support life forms. Some of these oceans may even be habitable for humans in the future, if we can find a way to access them and explore them. But how can we know for sure if these oceans exist and what they are like? The only way is to send more missions to these worlds and study them in detail. This is not an easy task, as these oceans are hidden under thick layers of ice or rock that are hard to penetrate and communicate with. We need advanced technology and innovative methods to overcome these challenges and reach these mysterious realms. We also need more funding and support from governments and the public to make these missions possible. This is where you come in. You can help us in our quest to understand the oceans of the solar system and beyond. You can learn more about these worlds and their oceans by watching our videos, following us on social media. You can also share your thoughts and opinions with us and with other viewers in the comments section below. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel liking our videos, hitting the bell icon for notifications. Every little bit helps us to keep making more content for you. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for more Cosmic Hunts on Cosmic Hunt X. Until next time, keep looking up at the stars and wonder what lies beneath them.